The world government is the biggest and most powerful organization in one piece. It was established by the 20 rulers many centuries ago. They allied together to ensure that they could overpower the great kingdom and erase it from existence. The 20 countries were successful in their objectives, after which they successfully formed the world government. The rulers of each country decided to settle in Marijor, and they eventually became celestial dragons. As the monarchs started living in the Holy Land, the countries that they left behind adopted new royal families. Any records containing information about the previous rulers were erased by the world government. This ensured that the identities of the monarchs remained hidden, and that no one peace criminal would target them in the future. In the Mary Joys, the empty throne symbolizes that all the rulers were equal and that they would not seize all the power for themselves. They also placed their swords around the throne as a sign of their loyalty. Considering the fact that there were 20 rulers who allied together, there should be 20 swords around the empty throne. Instead, there are only 19 swords. The missing sword belongs to Nefertari Lily, the queen of Alabasta. She ruled over the country and sided with the other countries. However, unlike the other leaders, she did not stay in Marijoa. She allegedly went back to her kingdom to rule it, which would explain why the Nefertari family still holds all the power in Alabasta. In the recent chapter of One Piece, Cobra stated that Nefertari Lily never went back to Alabasta. It was her younger brother who ruled the country. The five elders refuted his claims and told him that there was absolutely no doubt that she returned to her homeland, although they no longer had the evidence to prove it. Cobra was dissatisfied with the answer, but he had no other option. Moreover, the absence of the sword could mean two things. First is that Lily didn't want to continue being a part of the oppressive regime of the world government. And second is that she is actually the true sovereign of the world government, and she has taken up the name, Imu. The second idea seems far-fetched, but it wouldn't be wise to rule out the possibility entirely. After all, the silhouettes of the two characters have some resemblance. Imu doesn't appear before just anyone, and to do so after Cobra mentioned Lily makes things even more interesting. The possibility of Lily withdrawing her support for the world government is the likely outcome. She could have found out about Imu's existence and their plan to rule the world. This would have made Lily realize that she and the other monarchs were tricked into destroying the great kingdom when it posed absolutely no harm to them. Where well, Lily's decision could have induced panic in Imu, who wouldn't want the truth to come out. So the ruler of the world decided to eliminate Lily and tie up any loose ends. Furthermore, the role of the Nefertari family will have a crucial role to play in One Piece. The Nefertari family has safeguarded a Poneglyph for generations. They wouldn't do such a thing, especially when the Poneglyphs are the Bene of the world government. This implies that Lily and her younger brother were probably aware of the Poneglyphs' importance, and instead of reporting it to the world government, they decided to protect it. As in the recent chapter, Cobra stated that these Poneglyphs raised the flag of dawn to the world. Moreover, we got to know that if it was not about Nefertari D. Lily, the Poneglyphs wouldn't be spread throughout the world. And that's it for today. I hope you all enjoy this video and I also ask you to subscribe to help us. It will also help us to grow more and if you like please subscribe.